Well, hello there. My name is Sometimes Heather and I'm a dresses. Today, I wanted to show you something. Knit. I'm currently making a really cute cardigan and I have some yarn left over. I want to use these to knit gloves. Let's get started. This is a cotton yarn by Novita. I found five balls of this in a sale recently and I immediately used it for a cardigan. I have 20 grams left here and another 20 here. So this yarn is 50% recycled cotton. It's recommended for needle size 4 millimeters or US 6. I'm using needle size 3.5 millimeters because I want the knit fabric in these gloves to be relatively stiff. I favor the long tail cast on. Also, I like to do the first stitch like this. That isn't the loveliest option, but it works. And to cast on, I like to take this end, the short end, and have it go over my thumb. And this yarn here, that goes over my index finger, that comes from the ball. This way the actual stitches are cast on with yarn coming from the ball and I have a smaller risk of running out in the middle. I'm going to cast on 40 stitches, 10 per needle. Fourteen stitches done. Now I'm going to join to work in the round. I'm making these gloves up as I go along, so there is no written pattern for these. Unless Heather of tomorrow will be a super smart girl and write down the um, stitch count and round count in the description box below. What should I go with? I'm going to go with twisted one by one rib. Now that I have worked one round just in ordinary one by one rib, I'm going to start twisting my knit stitches. The pearl stitches will be worked as ordinary. In order to twist a knit stitch, you want to just knit it through the back loop. The pearl stitch is worked as normal and the next knit stitch worked through the back loop. Normal pearl stitch and it takes a few rounds to see the difference so I'm going to work say 10 rounds and return to you. I've worked 10 rounds in the twisted rib and I really like the finish of this rib. See how it makes the knit stitches look like tiny little braids. Now I'm going to work one round in plain old stockinette, which means I'm going to knit all the stitches. Nice and easy. You could of course also continue the rib onto the back of the hand but 
I want my gloves to have a smooth back and also palm. So now I want to create a thumb gusset. First I'm going to determine how many stitches I would like for my thumb. I'm guessing 12 will be plenty. I will transfer two stitches onto onto needle number two from needle number one, leaving my arm um, change of rounds here. Then I'm going to add one stitch here at the end of needle one every second row until I have 20 stitches here. Let's do the first round together. Work through needle number one, which currently has eight stitches. Pick one up. This, this technique will leave a thumb gusset that has like eyelets next to it. That might make your hand a little bit cold if you'd like to avoid that. Twist this added stitch and that will make the increases a little bit less noticeable. I'm going to use a stitch marker actually just to remind myself where I'm at. Pop that on there to remind myself that I have, in fact, increased on this row. At this point, during the increases, our glove is going to look like it's going to be a good fit for a giant. But don't worry, we're going to get rid of the extra stitches when we reach the thumb. Now it's time for the second increase. Because I am now smart, so I'm going to put my stitch marker there. And as I reach the end, I'm going to pick up this piece of yarn from the previous row and twist it and very uncomfortably work it. And there we have another stitch added. So continue like this, increasing every second row until you have 20 stitches on needle number one. I have finished my increases and I'm running really low on yarn. Hence I'm introducing accent colors. This is a cotton yarn left over from a previous project. It's a bit lighter than my cotton feel, but at this point, it's the only option I really have. My last increase is here, and I now have 20 stitches on needle one. I'm going to work through these and cast off these 10 stitches. This thing here will create my thumb. I'm going to use my black yarn to work this next round. I'm going to Weave in this end when I'm done with the cloth. 
for now it's just going to hang around and look useless. I often use elastic cost of methods but for this project I'm just going to rely with the good old knit one knit one pass knit stitch over the next stitch there we go I'm trying to keep the cast of stitches relatively loose so that my thumb won't feel constricting. One stitch left. I'm just going to hide that here. And now continue to work in stockinette. As I reach the end of this round, I'm going to continue with my black yarn. I will make um, stripes that are two rounds high. Now I have 20 stitches here. I'm going to work 10 onto one needle and then then on to another. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Work the last ten. And now as I reach the huge gap, I'm just going to continue on to needle three and pretend I don't have this one here. Join that together and after completing a green stripe after this round, I'm going to try this on. Two stripes completed. Let's try it on. What do you know? Fits like a glove. I'm going to keep working in stripes until I run out of green yarn. And then I'm going to work 10 rounds of twisted rib in black cotton. I will see you when my glove is finished. One glove done, time to make the other one. I changed my plans a little bit. I made the ribbing here green instead of blank because I had enough yarn left. So I think that looks nicer. So, now let's make the other glove. I have already worked the ribbing and now it's time to do the thumb cassette. In my first glove I have the change of rounds here and I would like it to be in the same place in the second glove as well just so I can get the um, change of stripes to the same place which means here in the first glove I worked my thumb onto needle number two and on the second glove I'm going to work it on needle number three move two stitches onto needle number three and my increases are going to be worked here 
right at the beginning of needle number four. I'm going to knit one round and then work the first increase. Let's get rid of this actually. Done. Now I need to work through needles. One, two, and three. Now I'm going to pick up yarn from in between the previous round stitches, twist that, pop that onto the needle and knit it. That's my first increase. I'm also going to again pop in a stitch marker to remind me where I work the increase. And just like in the first club, work the increases every second row until you have 20 stitches on needle number 3. After that, cast off these, these 12 stitches to create the thumb hole and continue just like in the first club. I've worked my last increase here and now as I have ended the increases it is time to bring in the contrast color. I'm going to start working with my black yarn. And I will work through needles 1 and 2 in the very ordinary fashion, just knitting every stitch. As I reach the 12 stitches on needle 3, I'm going to cast them off. Just in the most ordinary way. Making certain I leave a nice and tidy finish. Get rid of the last bit. As I meet the 20 stitches on needle number 4, I'm just going to divide them onto two needles so that I have 10 on each needle. As I reach the thumb stitches, I'm just going to I'm just going to continue to needle number three and work the rest of the glove exactly as I did. This is what my gloves look like after casting off and weaving in ends. This turned out really cute and comfy and even though I usually go for options a bit more lacy, I think this will get a lot of wear in the coming fall. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all later. Ta!